Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Schuler Ruler here. I just wanted to jump on and make a video on sizing some conduits using the new 2021 CE code methods. Now, with the 2021, there's been some significant changes to conduit sizing, especially around table six as well as table nine. Table 10, for the most part, has remained unchanged, but I just want to take a look at a couple different methods that we can use to size conduits um, using specifically table six versus say table 10. So let's get to it. So as I mentioned, the major changes that we're looking at for conduit sizing involve table six and table nine. Table six, if you've had an opportunity to check it out, previously in the 2018 code, we could go there with all the same size conductors and just simply select a conduit size. But the problem with that was when you use the table six versus the 1089 method, you could yield a slightly smaller conductor by using the 1089 method than the table six. So with the new table six, what they've got listed in there now is how much physical space individual conductors take up, as well as multiples of conductors. So for example, if you have 10 number 12s, you can simply slide over on table six and see how much physical space do those number 12s take up in that conduit. We can use that in conjunction with the other numbers and just simply add them up, or we can take individual conductors and multiply it by the number that we have. We're gonna look at a couple different methods in this video. If you've had a chance to take a look at table nine, you'll see that they've harmonized everything on table nine. So instead of having to flip through the old 2018 table nine A through P to select the individual type of raceway, now on table nine G, for example, which is the one that we use the most, all of the 40% fill rates for the majority of the conduits are listed on 9G for the common ones and 9H for the less common ones. So now it's just hit table nine, find the appropriate size conduit that's required to accommodate the total area occupied by your conductors from table six, or you can still do the table 10 and eight method, which results in still a, a move over to table nine to size the conduit. But you're gonna find that the, they yield very similar results, so there's not much of a difference in calculation. But we will take a look. So let's hit the whiteboard and run through a couple of numbers just so we can get the hang of it. I can't, for copyright reasons, show the actual physical code, so I will just discuss and hopefully you can follow along with me with your own code books so that you can read the tables as I'm going through them. So let's get to it. We're gonna start off our example. We're gonna say that we have 18 number eight RW90 XLPE unjacketed 600 volt conductors for our example. And we're gonna walk through three different methods to calculate the conduit size. And what you're gonna find with the 2021 code is they all yield the same conduit size with very, very, very negligible differences in the actual occupied area. So we'll start with our method one, which we're gonna use just table 6A for this. Now, with table six, we still have to keep in mind the different types of insulation used on the conductors to thumb through table six A, B, C, and so on. With our example, we're going straight to table six A because that is the RW90XLPE unjacketed 600 volt table. You'll notice down at the bottom, they now have the listed sizes for solid as well as the body of that table. The majority is the listings for stranded. So it's nice that they've amalgamated those into the same area. So starting off with table 6A, if we find the number eight row and we move over, because we have 18 of these, I can actually take the 10 conductor occupied area. So if I go to table 6A and I say 10 conductors that are number eight, take up an occupied area of 281.8 millimeters squared. And I slide back to the eight conductors occupied area of 225.44 millimeters squared, I get, we'll call it a total occupied area of 507.24 millimeters squared. With this number, I can keep table eight in mind. As soon as I have more than two non-lead sheathed conductors, I have a fill rate of 40%, which helps me. So I'm gonna write table eight at 40%. 
This leads me directly to table 9G. And if you're on table 9G, you'll notice starting on the left, it lists a rigid. And moving all the way across, you'll see we have PVC, flex, over to the far right, we have EMT. Let's say that these are in EMT, for example, and we want to size the appropriate EMT to accommodate this 507.24. Well, table 9G under the EMT to accommodate 507.24 it says that we require a 41 trade size conduit. That will safely accommodate all those conductors at that 40% fill. Now, that's the first method. The second method, we're still gonna use the table 6A method, which from our previous question there, we had 18, number eight, RW90, XLPE, unjacketed, 600 volt, and we'll stick with the EMT. But this time, instead of using the multiple occupied area listings, we're just gonna use the individual over on the far left side. So not the diameter, but the first one that gives us the actual occupied area or the millimeter squared that each conductor takes up. And I can simply do this. I know that if I have 18 conductors, I can multiply that by the individual occupied area of a number eight, that is, 28.18 millimeters squared. This gives me a total of 507.24 millimeters squared. Again, same answer that we calculated before, so it just proves that both methods yield the same result. This one might be a little bit faster when we're dealing with all of the same size conductors, just taking that individual multiplied by the number of conductors that we have. But same process, table eight was 40% which brings us to table 9G, again under the EMT column over kind of on the far right, close to the far right, it tells us again we still require a 41 trade size conduit. So both these methods so far have yielded the exact same required occupied area. The third method you're going to see where we use the table 1089 method yields slightly different. Not much, but it's just a little bit different. So with this third method, we're going to keep the information the same, but we're simply going to use the table 1089 method, which is very similar to what we did with the table 6A. What we're going to do when we go to table 10A, because we are dealing with stranded conductors here, um, as soon as I'm above a number 10, it's required that it's a stranded. So table 10A gives us the individual occupied area requirements of our single conductors, just like it did really on table 6A as well. But when we go to table 10A under the RW90 XLPE unjacketed 600 volt column, you'll notice that each one of those conductors has an occupied area of 28.17 millimeters squared. If you remember from the previous example number two, table 6A indicated that it actually was 28.18 millimeters squared. I don't know where this discrepancy comes from, but as I said, it does yield slightly different results. If I take this and simply multiply it by the number of conductors that I have, it yields 507.06 millimeters squared as compared to the previous 507.24. So again, slightly different result, but if I follow this out, table eight is still gonna require that we use the 40% as we're more than two conductors, which takes me to table 9G, still with the EMT, it requires again a 41 trade size conduit to accommodate all of those conductors. Personally, I find the table 6A method to be a little bit quicker, but now with the table 6A requiring that we find the occupied area, we're still gonna have to go back to table 9G with both methods to size the conduit in the end. As I said, unlike the previous 2018, which just gave us the conduit right on table 6A, but oftentimes we ended up with a conduit that might've been a little bit larger than was required. So this method, you're gonna end up either way with the same size conduit. The only thing that changes is that occupied area. In the next example, we're gonna take a look at what happens when we have multiple size conductors, which we're just gonna go back to the old table 1089 method, just like we did in this example, but at this time, we're not using all the same size. In this example, let's say we have three number 12 RW90 XLPE unjacketed 600 volt we're gonna say that we have four number six T90 conductors, and we're gonna say we have one number eight RW90. 
This is going to be our bonding conductor because we're going to say that everything is going to be in a PVC raceway. So with our numbers that we're going to choose from table 10A, all of these are going to be stranded conductors. I'm going to go to table 10A and we can find that a number 12, RW90, takes up approximately 11.61 millimeters squared. And if I multiply that by the three conductors, we get a total occupied area of 34.83 millimeters squared. When I go from my T90s, my T90s take up 32.71 millimeters squared from table 10A. And if I multiply that by the four conductors, it gives me a total occupied area for those of 130. 0.84 millimeters squared. And for my single bonding conductor, which is an RW90 XLPE unjacketed, all the same as my number 12s up top, it takes up an area of 28.17. And since there's just one of them, 28.17 millimeters squared. I'm going to add these all up. And again, I'm going to refer to this as my total occupied area which gives me somewhere in the neighborhood of 193.84 millimeters squared. And table eight, again, kind of a formality stop, but table eight, because there's more than two, requires the 40% fill rate, which takes us to table 9G. And now third column in for PVC, with a total occupied area of 193.84, it says we are required to use a 27 trade size conduit minimum to accommodate those conductors. Hopefully this has helped with the 2021 uh, kind of refresh how do we utilize these new tables or rather change tables as opposed to what was existing in the 2018. We'll try and keep bringing you some more updated stuff here a little more regularly. But thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.